edition of This Is Your Job. On our show today, you will have a chance to call in and identify the profession of today's special guest. You will then get an opportunity to ask him any questions you may have. The number to call is 1-800-YOUR-JOB. Here's some clues. While on the job, our special guest deals with hundreds of people daily. He has to be an expert at customer service, must operate state-of-the-art machinery, and follow strict sanitary guidelines. Okay. Well, the phone lines are open, and we have our first caller. Hello. Who are we speaking with? Hi, I'm Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Where are you calling from? From Fairlawn, New Jersey. Well, Cindy, go ahead and try to identify our mystery guest's job. Do you work in a hospital? No, Cindy, uh, that's not it. Uh, next caller. Hi, my name is Jason. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Hello, Jason. Go for it. Oh, I'll guess that you work at a car wash. No. No, we're sorry, Jason. Uh, we have uh, Mrs. Shannon on the phone. Hello, Mrs. Shannon. Aren't you a Grand Union Deli Associate? Are you a Grand Union Deli Associate? Yes, I am. Well, John Martin, this is your job. <laughs> Mrs. Shannon, you're right. And thanks for calling in to This Is Your Job. So, you're a Grand Union Deli Associate. Well, please tell us a little about yourself. I'm 22. I go to college part-time, work full-time at Grand Union. I started in the department four years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're about ready to take questions about John's job as a Deli Associate. And that number again is 1-800-YOUR-JOB. Let's take our first caller. Hi, my name is Sarah, and I'm from Plattsburgh, New York. I'm new in the deli department and have a question about customer service. Hi, Sarah. Now, what's your question? What does the phrase making the grade mean? The phrase making the grade is an easy way to remember the key points about customer service. John, didn't you bring some videotapes that will help illustrate different aspects of the deli department? Yes, I did. Let's take a look at this video that highlights making the grade in customer service, which begins with G, greeting the customer. Hi, how are you today? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. How can I help you? Um, I'd like a pound of the smoked ham, please. Okay, how would you like that sliced? Oh, thinly, please. Sure. Greeting the customer, making eye contact, is part of building customer relations. R, reacting promptly to quickly process the customer's order. There you are, ma'am. What else can I get for you? Um, I'd like a half pound of imported Swiss, please. Okay, how would you like that slice? Very thin, please. All right. How's this? Thin enough? Oh, that's fine, thank you. You're welcome. A stands for attentive service, giving the customer undivided attention while at the deli counter. There you go. Is there anything else you'd like? Hi, Cindy. Hi, Frank. Did you catch the MTV special on TV last night? Oh, I'm busy with a customer right now. Can I talk to you at lunchtime, please? Sorry, I'll see you at lunch. Okay. Sorry. What was it that you wanted? D. Delivering the customer requests require you to know the product variety as well as ingredients and uses. Here's your macaroni salad. Would you like something else? Well, I was looking at two separate items that seem very inviting, but uh, since I've never tried them, I'm really undecided. Well, which items are you interested in? Maybe I can help you decide. Well, I was looking at the ambrosia salad. Now, it looks very good, but I don't know what it is. Well, for starters, it's a great salad because I made it myself just about two hours ago. Now, we make the salad in the store. And let's see, we use sour cream, crushed pineapple, uh, sliced mandarin oranges, miniature marshmallows, and shredded coconut. Now, it has a sweet flavor, and it makes a great cool dessert. Would you like to try a sample? Oh, no, thank you. But it does sound delicious. I think I will bring some home for the family. Uh, let me have a pound and a half, please. Sure. E is for ending each transaction with a friendly thank you. Come again. This should be plenty for four people. Is there anything else you'd like? No, thank you. I think I have everything I need for today. Well, I hope you enjoy everything. I'm sure I will. And thank you for your help. You're welcome. Thanks for shopping with us. And see you soon. Following these guidelines is an important part of working well with the customer. Thanks for calling. Okay, well let's hear from our next caller. Hi, I'm Tom from New Brunswick, New Jersey. 
Yesterday, when I was working in the dolly department, a customer got very annoyed because we ran out of an item which was unspecial. How should you handle the situation? Deal directly with the customer. Offer a rain check and apologize for the inconvenience. If you need further assistance, call your department manager. The customer will appreciate your effort to help them. Okay, we have Anthony on the line from New Fairfield, Connecticut. Hi, John. I wanted to know what percentage of store sales comes from the deli department. The deli department is vital to your store success. It can generate as much as 4 to 6 percent of total store sales. Go ahead, caller. Hi, John. This is Michelle from Fort Lee, New Jersey. What are you majoring in? I'm in my second year. I'm taking liberal arts. Well, we have Nick on the line from Marietta, Georgia. Hi, Barry. I watch your show every week, and I really think it's great. Oh, thanks very much, Nick. I'm glad I got through today because I'll be starting in the deli department next week, and I thought I'd call in to find out what I should wear. Nick, wear neat pants, a shirt, and a tie, and slip-resistant shoes. Your store manager will fill you in on the details. John, we have a little surprise for you. It's time to travel down memory lane. We have someone on the line that was there on your first day in the deli department. Hi, John. Remember your first day in the deli department? Uh, yes. Do you know who I am? No. Let me give you another hint. I taught you how to operate the slicer machine. Oh, uh, Sally! Sally, how are you? Great. I'm the manager of a deli department upstate. That's great, Sally. I really appreciated your guidance when I was a trainee. And uh, speaking of the slicing machine, I, I have a video to demonstrate how to use it for the benefit of those viewers and trainees who are just uh, starting out. Let's begin by introducing you to the important slicer parts which most slicing machines have in common and the equipment you'll need for proper slicer operation and maintenance. If your deli uses a slicer that looks different than the one pictured, you should speak to your supervisor for instructions. On off switch. This switch should always be left off when the slicer is left unattended, when it is cleaned, or any time that the slicer blade guard is removed. Electric plug. Before cleaning or removing the blade guard, you should always unplug the unit. This added safety measure will help protect you and your co-workers from being cut should the on off switch be flipped accidentally. Blade. The blade is a razor sharp knife that spins at a very high speed to slice the product. It is so sharp that it should never be touched even when it is not spinning. Gauge or stop plate. This is a plate which moves back and forth varying the thickness of the slices. Slice adjustment knob. The slice adjustment knob moves the gauge plate back and forth. It should always be set to zero or below when the slicer is unattended or when disassembling or cleaning the machine. This is known as closing the blade. Blade guard. This device covers the blade except the portion that is doing the actual cutting. Meat gripper. This pushes the product against the cutting blade. It lets you control the cutting action of the slicer without endangering yourself by coming close to the blade. Carriage tray. This device holds the product and feeds it to the blade. It is angled down so that gravity helps keep the product against the blade. Carriage tray handle or slicing knob. This is used to move the carriage tray back and forth for slicing. Receiving tray. This is the plate used to collect the slices. Slice deflector. This removable metal plate directs sliced product away from the blade and into your left hand. Waste receiving cup. This plastic cup collects product scraps, which are byproducts of the slicing process. Sharpening stones. The slicer is equipped with its own sharpening device. It consists of two stones, which when engaged, come into contact with the blade. They are stored under a protective cover when not in use. Mesh glove. The mesh glove is steel reinforced and should always be worn when cleaning and sanitizing the slicer. It gives you added protection against serious injury when working near an exposed slicer blade. Plastic serving gloves. 
These should always be worn on both hands whenever you are slicing or handling product for customers. They help protect the customer from invisible bacteria. You should change the gloves after each customer transaction, when you handle a different product, or when you leave the department. Cleaning solution. This is a diluted mixture of company approved cleaner and water. For proper preparation, you should follow the directions listed on the container of concentrated cleaner. It is used to remove food particles and product residue from the slicer. Sanitizing solution. This is a diluted mixture of Grand Union or Big Star bleach and water. For proper mixture, follow the directions on the company sanitizer bottle. Sanitizer is specially formulated to kill invisible bacteria, which could contaminate the product and cause illness. Disposable paper towels. These are used to wipe the food contact surfaces. They should be discarded after each use. Use only Grand Union or Big Star approved paper towels. Cleaning tools. Nylon brushes, nylon scrubbing pads, and stainless steel scrubbing pads are used to remove heavy product residue from the slicer. Use only company approved brands. Plastic water container. This is used to hold clean hot water for rinsing the cleaning solution off the slicer. Operating the slicing machine. Begin by putting on a set of disposable plastic gloves. Place the product ordered by the customer onto the carriage. Move the gripper into position by swinging it up and around from its storage position. Turn the on-off switch to the on position. Set the slice thickness by turning the slice adjustment knob to whatever thickness the customer requests. Put a piece of wax paper on the receiving tray on which to stack the slices. Begin the slicing by moving the carriage handle away from you and then toward you. Collect the slices with your left hand and then place them on the wax paper on the receiving tray. When you think you've sliced enough product to fill the order, turn the machine off by turning the slice adjustment knob to zero and the on-off switch to the off position. Never leave a slicer that is switched on unattended. And John, all of these steps are necessary for the safety of the associate using the machine and the associates in the department. Thanks, Sally. It was nice hearing from you. Well, let's take our next caller. Hi, this is Joe from Suffern, New York. What do you do if you slice more than the customer requested? To avoid slicing more than the customer requests, do a trial weighing. A trial weighing is when you test weigh the sliced amount when you think it is below the amount requested. This helps to avoid over slicing. After a while you'll become familiar with the amount of slices needed to equal the requested amount. If the product is short of the order requested, slice more product until you reach the desired amount. If you've sliced over, ask if the overage is acceptable. If not, remove the product to get the exact amount requested. Tear weight is the weight of the empty container. Since we don't charge the customer for the containers, that weight must be input into the scale before weighing the product. Check with your manager for specific procedures. So when I order my pound of potato salad, I don't get charged for the container that it's served in. That's right. The weight of the container is not calculated into the price per pound. Okay. Well, let's take our next caller. Hi, I'm Jimmy from Hackensack. How's the procedure different in using a scanning or a non-scanning scale? A scanning scale is one that generates a scannable price label. You would obtain the UPC or special code number from the price book and punch in that number. A non-scanning scale generates a price label but without a scannable UPC barcode. Some older scales do not produce any price labels at all. If this is the case in your store, you will have to weigh the item and mark the price on the package with a marking crayon. Good question. Let's go to our next caller. Hi, this is Dave from Lebanon, New Hampshire. Is there a big difference between cleaning and sanitizing? Yes, cleaning is the removal of visible buildup in the department. It involves wiping, spraying with cleaning solution, using only company approved cleaning products, and sweeping to remove product residue and uh, debris. Sanitizing removes the invisible bacteria left behind after an area has been cleaned. Use a company approved sanitizing solution for this purpose. Ask your department manager for instructions on how to mix it. Once the sanitizing solution has been used, 
you can allow the surface to air dry or wipe it dry using paper towels. Never use cloth towels because that would cause the spread of bacteria. Also be sure to use the hand dip during the day to keep hands sanitized. All surfaces which come in contact with food in the deli department must be cleaned and sanitized. Okay, well let's take our next caller. Hi, I'm Nancy from Burlington, Vermont. Is it better to clean and sanitize throughout the day or at the end of your shift? Good question. In place cleaning, end of shift cleaning, and sanitizing are all necessary in maintaining a safe and attractive department. In place cleaning of the slicer and countertops should be done every two to four hours. In addition, clean the slicer anytime you slice something that leaves behind a heavy residue. End of shift cleaning and sanitizing involves the sweeping of the floors, the cleaning and sanitizing of all utensils and equipment, and food preparation areas. Ask the department manager for the exact procedures for your store. Go ahead, caller. Hi, I'm Mary Ann from Paramus, New Jersey. How can we ensure that we're giving the customer the freshest product? The freshness of the product you sell is protected by proper product handling and storage procedures. Let's talk about refrigerated products. They are stored in your deli cooler on racks. Never store products directly on the floor, even if it is packed in a shipping case. All containers must be covered completely with clear plastic wrap that fits tightly around the bowl. This is to maintain product freshness and prevent cross-contamination. Transfer all shipments of refrigerated product to the cooler immediately upon delivery in order to prevent spoilage. Mark each container or box with the date received. Position the product in the cooler so that existing stock is used first. The rule is first in, first out. Be sure to follow freshness codes as indicated in the operating manual. Good question. Let's go to our next caller. Hi, I'm Edwina from Milford, Pennsylvania. What's the proper temperature for the display cases? I'm glad you asked, Edwina. Check both the display cases and the cooler to ensure that the temperature is between 34 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This is essential to maintaining product freshness. Hot foods in the warmer or soup kettles must be maintained at temperatures of at least 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This will prevent harmful growth of bacteria. Familiarize yourself with the locations of these thermometers and periodically check the temperature levels. We have time for one final question. Hi, I'm Tim. There's a lot to learn, isn't there? What are your plans for the future? There certainly is a lot to learn. I'd like to work my way up to store manager. Well, that sounds good. Thanks for joining us today, John. Hope you come back and see us again sometime. Sure, I'd love to. And thank you for tuning in to today's edition of This Is Your Job. I'm Barry King. Until next time.